In the last segment, we saw a number of mechanisms that support pipes while still allowing normal pipe movement. Now, in this segment, we'll see two special types of pipe hangers that protect against severe shock, like water hammer or even an earthquake. Now, these two special devices are called shock arresters or snubbers, and we'll look at both a hydraulic and a mechanical snubber. As its name implies, a hydraulic snubber uses a fluid to absorb shocks, while a mechanical snubber uses mechanical components like springs and inertia masses to dampen shocks. Let's begin by looking at a hydraulic snubber. Now, this diagram will show you its basic principle of operation. Here, of course, is the casing. It's filled with hydraulic fluid supplied by this reservoir. One end of the casing is attached to a permanent support structure, such as an I-beam. The other end of the casing is penetrated by a piston rod that's connected to the piping we want to protect. Any movement of the pipe also causes the piston to move, and as the piston moves, it displaces hydraulic fluid. If the piping movement is slow, say when the pipe is heating up, then the piston will also move slowly, and the hydraulic fluid will be able to move freely through this orifice. This orifice is surrounded by two check valves. This check valve responds to fluid movement in this direction. Likewise, this valve responds to fluid moving in this direction. A third check valve here prevents backflow of hydraulic fluid from the cylinder back into the reservoir. Okay, so when the pipe is expanding, the piston pushes fluid slowly enough to go through the orifice without closing the check valve. The controlled movement of the pipe is unrestricted. But if there's a sudden shock to the pipe, its increased movement will be transmitted to the piston. The hydraulic fluid will be pushed with such force that it'll close the check valve. And when the check valve closes, fluid is redirected through this smaller orifice. But not as much fluid can get through this smaller opening. The restriction to the flow forces the piston to slow down. And since the piston is directly connected to the pipe, the uncontrolled movement of the pipe is also restricted. The pipe is protected against serious damage from excessive movement. Now, mechanical snubbers do the same basic job as hydraulic snubbers, but they do it in a different way, a more complicated one. So a little more detail is necessary to explain how they work. We'll be using this cross-sectional view, as well as an exploded view of some of the parts to get a better idea of how it works. Here, you can see the main parts. The casing is here. This end of it is attached to a permanent support. There's a telescoping cylinder here. One end of it attaches to the pipe we're protecting. The other end is threaded and meshes with this threaded shaft. The threaded shaft extends into the casing and forms a cylinder called the torque transfer drum. Now already, we can see that equipment movement will be transmitted to the telescoping cylinder here. When the telescoping cylinder moves in or out, it will cause the shaft and the torque transfer drum to rotate. Now let's finish identifying the parts before we talk any more about how the snubber works. Inside the torque transfer drum is a spring. Part of the spring extends through an opening in the drum where it engages with a part called the inertia mass. The inertia mass weighs more than any of the other parts that we've mentioned. Ball bearings here maintain the correct relationship between the parts. Okay? Now let's look at an exploded view of some of the parts to get a better idea of what they look like. This is the casing. It extends from here to here. Next is the inertia mass, which attaches to the shaft. A spring-like bracket fits inside the inertia mass. The torque transfer drum is here. It's actually part of the shaft, and the drum, we said, had an opening in it. This opening allows the spring here to extend beyond the drum and to engage the bracket in the inertia mass. The spring rides here on part of the snubber casing. And finally, here is the telescoping cylinder whose threads mesh with those of the shaft. Again, the parts fit together as shown in this cross-sectional view. 
Now, let's take the case of piping that is expanding as it's heating up. As the pipe moves, the telescoping cylinder also moves. This causes the threaded shaft to rotate. The torque transfer drum will also rotate because it's part of the shaft. The drum engages the spring, which in turn engages the heavy inertia mass. As long as the pipe movement is slow, which it is during normal startup, the parts will rotate slowly. The telescoping cylinder will gradually move in and the snubber will compress. The controlled movement of the pipe is not restricted. But if pipe movement is greatly increased due to sudden shock, the inertia mass will resist the movement. If you've ever tried to move a heavy object like a refrigerator, you've seen this same effect. If you apply slow, steady pressure, the refrigerator will move. But if you take a running start and come charging into it, the refrigerator will hardly move at all. You'll probably move farther than it will. In a mechanical snubber, the inertia mass acts a lot like that refrigerator. If there's a sudden shock to the pipe, the torque transfer drum will slam into the spring, and the spring will slam into the inertia mass. The inertia mass, being quite heavy, will resist being moved, and the spring will tighten up on the casing here. The resulting friction will slow the movement of the torque transfer drum. In this way, the movement of the telescoping cylinder will be slowed down and any uncontrolled movement of the pipe will be greatly restricted. Now, fortunately, mechanical snubbers don't usually require a lot of maintenance. But if they are exposed to heavy loads and constant vibration, one of the ears on the spring will sometimes break. So. If you're ever having trouble finding out why a mechanical snubber isn't working right, remember, check the spring. Now, when you check a hydraulic snubber, make sure the reservoir has enough fluid in it. If it requires filling, consult the manufacturer's instruction manual for the proper grade and type. And remember, if the reservoir needs filling, there's a good chance that the snubber is leaking somewhere. Check the area where the piston rod penetrates the casing. The seals there are a likely culprit. Checking either a mechanical or a hydraulic snubber for proper operation can be quite an involved job. If you ever have to do it, you'll usually find yourself working with other mechanics and using special equipment. But if you know how the snubber works and you read the instruction manual carefully, you'll be in good shape. I right, want you to turn off the tape now. And when we come back, we'll discuss three more piping auxiliaries, expansion joints, surge dampeners, and impact flanges.